go to the VA. It's yes. Three dollars for bus to go get my bus passes. The VA is closed, and I got kind of upset about it. But on the bus, this what? big, scary-looking Mexican guy comes to sit. He's in the back of the bus, and all of a sudden, he comes and sits down beside me, and I'm like checking it out. And he starts telling me about his sister that just um, got diagnosed with lupus. And, you know, he was kind of concerned about her. <laughs> and I got to take you by the hand. I said, sir, can we pray for her? Her name is Elizabeth, by the way. If we pray, let's say pray for her. But I got to take you by the hand and pray. Gladly. You're on. We're doing, we're doing a little meeting. Sit down, sit down, Danny. I want you in. I fell down yesterday. Look, I bruised my arm all over. Look, I'm going to get, i got to get him to redo mine because mine is wearing off a little bit. Done. I know, it looks nice. He, he's doing it. I, he he did, done. Look, he did this one, but it's wearing out. So he's going to do it again. Looks good. I'm waiting to talk to the lady about getting something to put on. Danny, I've not seen you since you've been back. So it's been about a year. And I told Mike, I said, I want to see Danny. Oh, and so it worked out. Okay, look, we're doing, we're doing a little meeting, actually. And B, B and I had... B and I had Bobby... I really don't want to knock him out. <laughs> Being I had Bobby in some of my other meetings, I figured this would be a chance to have everybody. Anyway, what I didn't get to finish yes. telling you, this the big skinny guy, a scary looking guy, he just comes and sits beside me, and he said, you alright? I said, I'm oh. fine. He starts talking to me about his sister getting diagnosed with this skin disease. Okay. And I got to take him by the hand and I said, can we pray for her? Her name is Elizabeth. I haven't forgotten that. Pray for her. I got to take him by the hand, pray with him, pray for her. And then I get to the VA and it's closed down and I'm whining and crying. And I got to thinking about her. Maybe that's the only reason I was on the bus. Correct. Look, Bobby, this is what I just talked the other day. That when I'm teaching the book of Samuel... And God picked Saul to be the king. But the way Saul found out about it was Saul's father lost three donkeys. And his father says, go find the donkeys. So he's on this little trip to find donkeys, and he runs into the prophet Samuel. And Samuel says, forget about the donkeys. The trip was intended for you to find your destiny. Because he didn't realize, like the little VA trip, Sometimes you're getting on a bus or you're going a certain direction in life and maybe God has you in a certain place Not because you're looking for the donkeys or not because you were going to go to the VA Maybe he wanted you to run into somebody and that happens a lot So that's kind of one of the themes that that's I've been talking about That's why I brought it up because it's kind of freaky this great big looking guy comes and sits beside me Checking him out here. He says, You okay? I said, Yeah. Then he starts telling me about his sister. And I got to take him by the hand and pray with him. And then I cry and whine because I get to the VA and it's closed. And then it did cross my mind. Well, maybe that's the whole reason yes. I came. Correct. Just, I know I'm a little on my butt right now, but I still think the Lord does it sometimes. Yes, you sure can, Danny. I, I have not seen Danny in maybe over a year. Danny was in some of the meetings I did at Angels, and he liked to discuss. Danny knows the Bible, so I haven't seen him in a while. I said, oh, I'm going to run into him. I knew he was back in Corpus Christi. I don't, I don't go to Bible study anymore over there okay. because of Mike Hall. He I turned into Greg. Mike is, and Travis are still there, Yeah, I believe. Somebody beat Mike up with a baseball bat. Yeah, Ben broke his oh, okay. broke his jaw and shit. So why are you? Uh, yes. One else? yes. Yeah, you need to watch out. He's got a carry gun around looking for him right now. I wish Danny had a uh, his guitar. I like Danny plays good old rock music. Guitar Jason, when I run into him, I'd ask him, play uh, Zeppelin or whatever. And look, he, Jason's good, but Danny's good. I've heard Danny. By the way, Robert and Chrissy still live there. I seen him yesterday. Crow, what is anything particular? 
that. Well, uh, I like what y'all were discussing. Uh, uh, I used to have a bunch of uh, rules I lived my life by. I called them they're my book rules because in my book this applies, that applies. Now I only have one rule, and it's the hardest by far than all of them, and it's no regrets, you know. And uh, my uh, fear is like what you were just discussing is not um, the the. You know, is to just blow off the little trip because of whatever, and missing the big picture, like you said. Uh, I think, you know, on that trip might not be because of what it appears. It might be some other reason for it, and uh, that's that's uh, uh, it's hard to, 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 to go by. But you know, things happen, and, and like here, uh, I woke up and uh, no intentions of coming here of any kind. But uh, next thing I know, here I am. And uh, next thing I know, I run a deep again, and, and uh, so uh, you know. Uh, uh, I'm sure there's a reason for it. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been uh, things wouldn't have happened the way they happened. When I uh, when I left the house today, I did a little website. I did some videos today, but then I said I'm gonna. I ran into Mike last week. I found out he's still staying at the place I knew he was staying at. Lance was there. I said, Oh, next week I'll come see you. But as I drove past here, heading to Mike's, I ain't been here for months. I saw you standing right there. Now Crow's a friend of mine. He's been in a few meetings. So I purposely was going to turn around, and Mike was walking. So this was unplanned, but I also said I want to see Danny, and then Mike told me, Danny Gill stand up. I said, great. I said, Danny's one of the guys that used to be an amazing. So uh, a lot of times you go by, you just, the ministry of Jesus in the Bible is quite unique. He's not doing a lot of planned stuff, though he does go to what we call the synagogue, and he does speak at times. But most of it was with the guys, mm -hmm. by the water, by the Sea of Galilee, fishing. Uh, and then he's given these parables, these things that they're going to remember the stories. He, he's talking in pictures where you're not listening to a 40-minute point-by-point. Teeth, you're like getting a story from him, but that'll stick with you. Like a guy was throwing seeds, and some seeds made it in, others got caught up in the hard ground, and so you like. So a lot of communication is things that people share, and then you pick up on. Them. Having said that, can I interrupt just for yes. a moment? I love the scripture when two or more are gathered in my name. He's here. Yes. That's true. Yes. They may think we're a bunch of homeless bombs. They don't know the battles I fought. That atheist guy that's trying to hurt everybody. Sometimes they. He don't know what's coming down. Just because a homeless bomb fell on his butt. I heard a preacher the other day. I loved it. It calls you back. He's no longer here. I don't know if you ever with it. We we can span. How are you? He does the. Uh, it was chaplain off the base. Oh, okay. Not Catholic. He's just chaplain. He just preaches the gospel. Yes. And he did a little scenario the other day. This is last week. The transfer to Virginia. And he talked about the rock. Don't know nothing about God. When it hits, it really don't bounce. And they pull up a ball. But he says. The Holy Spirit and the power, look at that. It popped right back up. It's not where we fall, it's how we bounce back up. Okay. You know, it says in Proverbs, as a matter of fact, David Martin's son, Jesse, quoted it when I was with him a few weeks ago. But it says, a just man, a good man, will fall down seven times and get back up again. But a bad man will fall down once and stay. And, and it's, I like that verse because... Falling down, meaning you had some difficulties, it doesn't mean you're bad. It, the, the key is you get back up again. The verse I read today, this morning in the Psalms, is this. Forget which Psalm, 60-something, but it said, it's about Jesus, but it's in the Psalm. It says, you have ascended on high, you have led captivity captive, and you have received gifts unto men, even for the rebellious, that they, God might dwell among them. Now that's a famous verse because in the New Testament, in the book of Ephesians, Paul uses that, talking about Jesus ascended up and he received gifts to give unto men. But it says even gifts to give to the rebellious. So the gifts of God, even the spiritual gifts, they're also made 
that we could speak the Word of God, not only to those that are doing well, but to those that are also having problems, so God can dwell among them. And I like that verse because it says, He descended first into the lower parts of the earth, meaning he basically went to hell when he was judged, and he went to the cross. There's a debate theologically, I won't do it. But it says, Who is he that ascended up, but he that went really far down? So the principle is, if you go down in life, and you go through a lot of shit, then you will have the opportunity later to get back up. And that's when God will use you the most. And so Jesse, David's son, though, when I was with him that day, I spent the day with David Martin's son, Jesse. You, I'm, you might know Jesse. You know, I, it might have been the day I spent with him about three weeks ago. I, I went to see David, and I, his boy was there. I said, well, come with me, Jesse. But that's what he kept saying. He said, I know I got a calling, John, and Jesse's kind of rebellious, you know. I said, I think you do have a calling, Jesse. He said, but I'm tired of having to keep getting up again. I just <laughs> wished, he said, I could just stay up. Get up. He says that. Yes. yes. This is my neighbor across the street, uh, Donna. And sometimes Donna comes down. I don't talk much when I'm at the house. I'm kind of like an isolated monk. Ask any of my neighbors. I'm like in hiding. But then when I'm doing the videos or I'm... Say hi. Video. Yes, you're on video, Donna. Yes. <laughs> Donna. Donna is a neighbor for many years across the street. But all of the friends I know that you've seen on the videos, Donna knows them. And she's helped a lot of the people on the streets. And they used to visit across the street and say, hey, John lives right across the street. That's Stella. Crow, I still remember the experience that you had. I remember it. The one you had when you prayed a particular yeah, Catholic prayer, but the prayer was not intended for the thing that you prayed it for, but you prayed it and then you had an experience because, and it kind of scared you. You want to tell it again a little bit? Um, it's, uh, that, telling you, that's the first time I ever uh, said it, and I still haven't spoken about it since. It's uh, uh, truly one of the scariest uh, uh, things I ever experienced. Um, and uh, it kind of goes to show that, uh, uh, that the means does not justify the ends, even though you may think it does. And uh, and being a, a person that has not ever, you know, not always walked the path, you know, in my 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 uh, logic at the time was that, uh, you know, well, I'm doing uh, something I've always done, uh, uh, you know, and but uh, this time I wanted to do this instead of what it was intended for. And uh, bottom line was that uh, um, I. Uh, Said a, uh, a a prayer that was intended for to be said in church uh, for specific use uh, of uh, of uh, angels escorting you uh, during communion uh, to receive the host. Uh, born and raised a Catholic, and and, um, and this time I uh, I said the same uh, prayer, but uh, and uh, the end result I, instead of what it was intended for was to uh, help me at the time. Uh, uh, a lot of bad things were happening, a lot of bad people were around, and, and I was saying it for protection. And uh, uh, beyond anything I ever expected, uh, that's exactly what happened. And, um, and, and then, um, as a result of it happening, I also discovered the biggest, uh, my biggest uh, um, uh, problem at the time that I needed protection from was myself. And, um, but the experience, uh, um, the experience of seeing these angels, uh, I was uh, extremely uh, religious. I would say at that point in my life, and um, you had two angels that appeared. Uh, one from one. each of the uh, um, uh, uh, angels, yes, and uh, they were extremely uh, frightening. Uh, I was raised that angels were soft and white and fuzzy and took care of you and such, and uh, and they they do most time, but. Uh, they do God's will, and uh, at that point, the scariest thing I'd ever seen was, uh, was Satan. And uh, but I realized shortly after that, after talking to the priest, that Satan only has the power over you that you allow him, that you think he does. And with that knowledge, you know, at that point, he doesn't. But the angels. Um, okay, Bobby. If it be God's will that you that I be uh, struck dead right now, he would send an angel down, and uh, the angel would come down singing praises to God. And, and strike me dead, and there isn't anything on the face of this earth I could do about it. And uh, 
that uh, is really a truly a frightening experience, especially when you see these angels because um, they're not all exactly the way you, that you uh, have this uh, idea in your head that they should be. And uh, they are truly frightening. It, it took uh, seven years before I stepped foot into a church again. And it was the Easter last year that I did. And um, and I'm still, uh, I'm not going regularly, but I am definitely um, uh, uh, attending whenever uh, I get the opportunity. And uh, it... Um, Angels, uh, I knew when Crow told me that testimony when I think I met him the first time and we did a little meeting that day when Jimmy had his apartment but I knew it was legitimate even if uh, you don't always know but in the Bible when angels appeared to people they were they were afraid most of the times they fell down and because it was a frightening experience and most of the appearances we read about them in the book of Daniel in Ezekiel even in the book of uh, Revelation by John and the angels will tell the people, don't fall down, and then they sometimes make them get up. They're, they can't even move, and then they pick them up. So many experiences in the Bible are kind of like that, where you are thinking not that it's going to be frightful, but it is. It says in Hebrews, our God is a consuming fire. And uh, God, I didn't teach it the other day, but in the Catholic Mass this past Sunday, the verse was in the Old Testament book of Genesis and it was when three men appeared to Abraham. Now these three men are angels but what we sometimes call them when we teach in scholarship or theology we say it's a theophany. A theophany is a term that means it looked like it was angels but it was really a, a appearance of God, okay? That's what a theophany would mean. Sometimes we read the famous story of Jacob, and Jacob wrestled all night, the Bible says, with an angel, and then he prevailed. That's when his name got changed to Israel, and the angel wanted to escape, say, let me go, and Jacob says, I, not until you bless me. Well, he blessed him, but now we also, and his name is changed from Jacob to Israel because it means you prevailed with God and with men. So that angel Jacob wrestled with, the Bible says, was an angel, but a lot of teachers say, well, he wrestled with God, because later we read he wrestled. So sometimes um, these appearances of angels, like Mass Sunday, had three angels appearing to Abraham. And the three angels appear to Abraham, and he fixes a meal, and him and Sarah are older. And the angels say to Abraham and to Sarah, this time next year, according to the time of life, you're going to have a child, you're going to get pregnant. And that was the fulfillment of the promise. And Sarah was about 90 years old. Abraham was about 100. Yes, and so Sarah kind of hears the story and she laughs about it. But because it, most of us think it's because she thought, you got to be kidding me. You know, I've been waiting all these years for this promise. Uh, and the same thing with the story of Moses. Um, God called Moses to be a great deliverer. And when Moses was young, he thought, this is my destiny. But he goes in the flesh, and he kills an Egyptian, and then he thinks, see, I'm the one. And then two Jews are fighting the next day, and he tries to break it up. But look, I'm the, I'm the deliverer. I'm the preacher. And then the one, when he tries to break it up, this is how it is anywhere, right, in the bluff. They, they say, oh, you're going to do what you did to the Egyptian yesterday? And so they were like ratting on him. And what does Moses do? He flees for 40 years. He goes, hides out. He finds like a place called the bluff back in that time. I'm going to hide out. I'm going to hide out for 40 years. But then when God finally does appear to him in the burning bush, and then God begins telling Moses, at this time he's 80 years old. He forgot about that vision when he was younger. He forgot about all that he wore. Because God says, now I'm going to send you back. And he deals with a lot of insecurity, like, oh, I can't be the deliverer now. Moses had a temper problem, he had an anger problem, but he finally did fulfill the calling of God. And so a lot of times, yeah, but that was just, that was from the Mass, the story from Genesis, that was from the Mass this past Sunday, the Catholic Mass. And the three angels would appear, and, and so in the Bible, uh, God, and often it's scary, because God is communicating. 
Uh, in, in the Bible, we understand that, that God gave the law to Moses. In Jewish tradition, Jewish tradition, not in the Old Testament, they teach that it was given to Moses by angels. And then in the book of Hebrews, which is in the New Testament, it actually says that. So when God does something through an angel, you could say, God appeared to me or an angel because in the scripture that's what we saw Jacob wrestled with an angel but it says he wrestled with God okay? then three angels appeared and many teach that's the form of the Trinity because you had these three you had the three so uh, it's funny that you would uh, say it that being frightening because I obviously I never had any experience with angels uh, that I'm aware of it up to that point and it would make sense how uh, severely how severe it was that it, it frightened me because uh, I'd had about three incidents before then of, of just pure evil and um, uh, they of course were not um, uh, scary in the least that you know with the, these these things in fact they were quite pleasing in, in every way and uh, but uh, I was still aware enough to know that they were not right they were not uh, anything uh, uh, that God would have uh, put down on me but uh, 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 and uh, looking back on it, um, I could see that um, only something as severe as that was could have uh, uh, diverted me from the path that I was on at the time. It could have scared me enough to, to stop what I was doing, and yeah. and, um, and, it, and it worked. That's for sure. Uh, it's uh, uh, even though it was for my own good, and it was something that uh, um, was good. It's still uh, the experience is frightening enough to where. Um, you know, even though I'm not doing something, uh, you know, going to the church regularly, etc., things I know that I should be doing, it's still uh, so uh, frightening uh, that, uh, that I'm not doing it, and uh, and I know I should, but um, and I know, but I do know I will. Yeah. We go back, uh, uh, you know, honestly, uh, um, when you have God in your life to the extent that I did at that time, you know, even though it was something that frightened me away. It's also uh, something that you miss a great deal in your life, and um, I know that even though I'm not doing my end with him, that he is more than doing his end with me. And uh, I could say easily right now that, uh, that he, is, uh, all, he is absolutely carrying me, yeah. uh, even though uh, uh, it would not seem like it to most people, uh, I'm aware of that much. Um, you know, and uh, I hope that I uh, always uh, remain that uh, aware, you know, and, um, and it's uh, really even hard to talk about it because uh, because then I have to face it more. But then again, that may be why I, I may do it to begin with, is just uh, to, uh, that I was able to and plus, tell it. I tell people often, look, the Vatican, I brag about this because one time the Vatican logged on to the website like four years ago it showed Vatican C I used to look I don't have that function anymore because it clogs up the site but it would show what different countries and nations and one day I just happened to look I didn't always check and it said Holy See Vatican City I said oh that's amazing and you know they don't fake it because that's a blog you can't. I said somebody I don't know how who logged on but it was, it was very interesting. You know, I tell a lot of the people, but you see some of my friends here today. I say, I'm amazed that I've known guys for 20 years and all. I've not known Crow that long. I said, but they all live in the same area here, Flower Bluff. And sometimes, look at Frankie. Frankie! Frank! And there's one. But when I was pulling up here with Mike, I, I introduced him to uh, Frank. You're on video. I'm doing a meeting. Frank, say something. He's the one that actually brought me up here today. Frank, how you doing, Frank? Pretty good. Uh, fair, fair. I, I did. I, how was hey, your man, Rick is, I know his brother. How was your brother doing? He's in jail. Okay. Rick is in jail. Uh, Rick did the tree. F Frankie and oh, Rick no. were in my meetings as well. The ones I used to. We're, we're doing a meeting, so you're on well, video. I'm, I'm, I'm going to attend it. All the people. Yeah, we're here. We're doing it. We're almost the, they said, I'm going to be honest. The reason I came up here today and you ain't seen me in two months is I, I'm short on cash, and they said if I did a meeting here and took up an offering, yep. I'd get like a hundred. Is that true? You need a no. <laughs> hundred people. I don't take. I don't take. I never take up. Money.
Frankie was in a lot of the little meetings I did at Angel's house. Yeah. At that little half. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting. I was saying, yeah. uh, Mike. I pulled up here with my friend Mike, who's the artist who gave me the tattoo. He's got to redo it. It's wearing off. But I said, well, we're going to see Crow. He didn't know Crow. Just uh, a lot of the guys I've known for many years, they don't know each other, and it's ama it's amazing to me because I'm like, I've known this guy for 20 years. I know this one. So Frankie, you're looking like you're doing pretty good. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've been feeling like a little weight for me, but I've been walking these streets forever, man. Yeah. I love all you. Yeah. Where you come from? How come I ain't never seen you before? How come I ain't never seen you before? Look, look Bobby knows the Bible pretty good. Oh, y'all yeah, want to hear the story? Yes, let okay. me see how much I'll time we did. Just... Oh, we got time. Go ahead. This is, this is an ugly one. Go ahead. Tell it. Okay. This is your time to shine, Bobby. <laughs> I bow my knee. Like 12 years old. I was the ugly duckling. My sister, I called her Queenie, and she go back and forth to church in a little pink outfit. You know, I was the ugly dog. And when she stopped going, I said, "What happened? How come you going to church?" She says, "Well, only 144,000 Israelis Jews are going to heaven." I said, "What? I got a Jew. I got to read this." So I read the Book of Revelations, and I get to it, and yeah, I saw. And I stopped reading, but if I kept reading, I'd have seen about the multitudes and the transformation from that to the Gentiles, which is basically the rest of the world. Yeah. I don't want to tell this one, dude. It's kind of ugly. Let, what about I, when Bobby, when I was doing the meetings uh, two, a year ago, now Bobby's been around for years. But he kind of, some of the guys tagged along and said, I'll go. But Bobby knew a lot about the Bible, because I never really know. Some of the guys are familiar. But Bobby Bobby told me that some of the story, you used to go to uh, John Osteen's church. I remember, okay. yes, I remember there was a, a lady that was ordained as a pastor. She used to come to my church from Joel Osteen, the father. I wasn't, John. Oh, yeah? I was led there. I'll tell you this, because 10 years before this incident happened to me I had a major gunfight right across the street from the church I mean a lot of gunfire a woman got shot and I and the girls dressed up in their gray outfits to go see the guy from um, Kiss the one they called Cat he got saved Peter Chris and he was um, doing a little tour doing his ministry and all the girls I dressed see, up. I could sing I Kiss it. in the back. I wouldn't even walk <laughs> across the street. Call him, but I can't <laughs> come home right I wouldn't even walk across the street to see him. Ten years later, after some weird things happened, basically saw the light, run into Damien, a little monster demon. Now, in the church, didn't John Osteen have a, like a message when you were in the church? Remember that? He yeah. said something, somebody needs to be here. See, I remember, Bob. When he said that really because, now, I've been raised, I, I believed in the Bible, I bowed my knee before the Lord, but I didn't really know the gospel, gospel. And I'm scared, even though I was told by a ministry, you're in a lot of trouble. That little Baptist church you're going to is great, but you need to go to Lakewood and hear the pastor. And I'm sitting there scared because he's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I love you for that. But he made a statement. Jesus Christ was not an archangel. Jesus Christ created archangels. And I started to listen. All of a sudden, I mean, the scripture says, no one can preach the truth unless the Spirit of truth be upon him. And when he told me that statement, I listened. And I had a real bad earache, too. And he stops right in the middle of his sermon like he often did. It says somebody has a real serious earache and problems. If he'll stand up, the Lord will heal him right now. Well, a couple of little ladies stand up. No, no, no. You're not the one. But he'll heal you too. But there's somebody here. And I'm not about to stand up. Yeah. And he says, the Lord will heal you anyway. And all of a sudden, pop, my ear popped like that. Something pop. And I started listening to the man. That's the man I call my pastor. And that was John o John Osteen was the pastor of Lakewood Church. Really? 
Yes, and his son, when John Osteen died, his son Joel, Joel and Joel's told the I'm familiar somewhat with uh, literature, and Joel said, you know, when he first started, you know, he didn't even know if he was going to take over, but God, you know, uses Joel Osteen a lot, because the church actually has grown a lot more under Joel than it did under John. Well, that was John's biggest dream. He used to dream of a, we had a big church to begin with. I mean, it started a little bit, you know, like I said, I crawled across the street to see him. Now, actually, it was kind of weird. It's the only time I got to shake his hand. I went through the wrong door in his bodyguard because um, they tried to kill his children and shit. Excuse me. And yeah. send letter bombs and stuff. Oh, I remember that. So we had a guy named Tom, big old blonde-headed dude, kind of took over to like be his bodyguard. Cause I was surprised. John's no bigger than me. Yeah. And I, I happened to go to the wrong head. door, and I'm tripping like a leaf. You get mad, too. This is you mad too. when I first got this Damien's battle. I, I still don't know what this that is. I remember. The Damien, the well, he if you want to study it, but he had, there's always either people that are influenced by demonic stuff or people that are possessed, and he had an experience with somebody like that. And so, There's Tom. I see Tom over there. But I walked through the wrong door, and there's John Osteen. And this is one thing I want to I do. Mean, you know, yeah. You can see me. Yeah. Whenever I get on my feet, yeah, I know. He had a big heart for you know, India. Yes. The ADD, my a body billion knows. people out there worshiping rats and stuff. Yeah, he had a big heart for it. Overtook it now. Because he's backing up this big like blonde. He's backing out the door, and John's like, and they still, don't I believe in evangelism, and. India, a billion people out there worshiping rats, and here my little trailer, and the guy says, stop, stop right there. And John said, no, let him come to me. I got to shake his head. That's the only time I got to shake his head. It doesn't matter if you get, no matter what happens. He's calmer and stronger. He is calm. And anybody, they try to tell me. Frankie's brother, whose name is Rick, Rick, was in the little Bible studies I did over at Angels, halfway house. But then one night I was doing a meeting and I said, oh, I got a big tree that needs to be cut. And sure enough, Rick came over, did an excellent job, Rick. But Rick struggled with, you know, drugs. And so I, I told the story before, but he did a good job. And I only, I told him, well, you cut the whole tree for, I forget how much, maybe 250 or something. So, but it, look, it was a big job. He did a great job. But because of the drug problem, he never got a chance to come by and I, to finish just moving the limbs because they were all in the yard. But I prayed. I didn't give him the whole money at first. I gave him half, whatever it was. But, you know, I thought, I'm going to pay Rick when he shows up, even though I told him, look, you got to at least move all these big <coughs> pieces because they weren't cut real small. But I said, I'm going to pay him because he was coming by. John, can you pay me the rest? Not until it's done. But I did pay him. I said, you know what, brother, I'm going to pay you anyway, and I'll just finish you it. The money, you need the work. But then a week later, he came by with the two Mexican brothers that he worked with. Yeah. He didn't tell them that I paid him the rest. And I was reading, the, I believe it or not, I was reading the Bible. But I have a temper sometimes. And they ring the bell, and my yeah. wife's like, oh, the tree guys are here. I said, Rick, I said, is he here? And then they said, they didn't know I paid. And they said to me, uh, you know, we're here to collect the rest of the money and they were all the Mexican guys and sometimes people don't pay yeah, right. and even though I didn't have to pay the rest I already paid it but Rick probably got high his brother so I got mad I kind of blew it I said I was cursing I said you gotta be effing and then the older yeah. man got scared a little bit I said I, I said I paid that mother eff. you know I was mad but Rick was still he saw it you know Rick was there but, you know, a week later, I still went to the halfway house to do the meeting. Rick was in the back room. I said, no, come on, brother. I said, so, you know, things happen. Yeah. He, 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 he got a hard goal. Yeah. But he still, he still, he still his mind that he got some, some issues. Yeah. yeah. Still, he, got the same, he did the same thing. But we always give. But we got to get that part to where we drop. Like Yali, excuse me. Yes. K Bears already he told me up. I need to take he, a shower. Okay. Bye. Say bye, Bobby. Bye. Bye, Bobby. <laughs> bye, Bobby. <laughs>
Bye, Bobby. I'm the only one that's supposed to tell yeah. jokes on the videos. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I can imagine, imagine a person just talking to you. Frank's had some str I remember Frank. Right you now, know. I'm not told, like Lomo, you know, uh, there's times where a person needs a little something, money. You don't really need a lot, but if you do got to have a respect, that's, that's it. <laughs> Did I lose my zip phone? I don't want to lose it. Oh, there it is. Where's my zip phone? I lost it. Somebody you know, picked it up. Really? Yeah. Unless, oh, unless you lent me yours me, before. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But I'm going to say that and close it. My part. I thought it was mine. Yeah, I'm, I'm still going to yeah. walk, walk, walk the line. Frankie, you heard you want to tell a little of your story? You had a. I do remember your wife passed away. 2011? Yes. See, I remember. The problem about it is I was in, locked up, you know, and no funny business. The kids was in state custody. I was in there for ICE. And then, and then I, I got them come down here out there. I was in prison in Kansas. No pain. Did four years. Come on out. I've been down here for three years. And everybody's been good to me. And the main thing is all that going on, the wife, kid. For some reason, I go down here, and I got my people's got money up there in Leander, Texas, you know, and it's about, they pray for me, and I'm still here, man. And I, I get mad at my own people, because we're gypsies, I'm real high up German. We, you know, I don't believe in banning your family. Yeah. And that's what Jesus did. You know, Jesus don't forsake your family or whatever. And that's the way I'm going to be the day I'm dying. It is like, like the light is confirmed. That I'm a made man. That's the way it's going to be. Your wife had cancer, Frank. She cancer. She didn't tell me nothing okay. about it. And she passed away. She passed away. Yeah. And my, my, my sister passed away recently, uh, uh, three weeks ago, uh, okay, uh, in Kentucky. Know. And it's nothing, you know. But Ricky's dad, my, my, my brother Ricky, he dealt with JFK Marina over here. Okay. For many years. But he has a heart trouble. But they're di different, you know, D D D D. You know, we're right here, and it's like we're like where nobody comes to see me or you know, nothing. So I'm just saying that I love all you that's up there, and I, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be that the way I die. Yeah. I give, I give, I take, but I think it's gonna be good. Amen. But I appreciate Thank you. I'm reason I'm here today. Appreciate yes, you. we did. This you was. Let me hear. Uh, 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 I had no reason to think anything uh, of anything other than uh, just, but. Regardless, I'm here, and I'm here yeah. because of Frankie, and, yeah. uh, and like I said, I had no intention coming here when I woke up this morning and bumped into him, but, uh, but then again, here I am. You know, and I told Crow when I seen him here, I said, you're normally not here, Crow, but I turned around because he said he ain't been here for maybe a few months, just like me. And so sometimes, and I do pray when I'm, who am I supposed to visit, who am I supposed to see, I got a text, my friend David in Kingsville, which we did some meetings. And if he wants tomorrow, if he wants me to come over, I'll come up here and then we'll all maybe take the ride to Kingsville. I used to do the weekly meetings, but we might do them on and off, and that's kind of... See, that's what's kind of freaky, what I told you when I first seen you walk up. The thing I've been thinking about is when I get back on my feet, the first thing I wanted to do was buy a van and give you the keys. Okay. That way when we go, we can right, just Frankie. take the whole... Train load. Yeah. I used to drive every. Uh, sometimes I had the van, and then a few times I had the car. But I remember when I took one of my New Jersey trips. Uh, when I got back, uh, Bobby was. Uh, some of the guys said Bobby wanted to keep doing the meetings even when you were gone, John. Actually, my goal when I do these little fellowship meetings, my goal was that some of the people would begin because they're able to sit and do this, and then th if they do it on their own. And then I might go once every few weeks, like to Bishop, Kingsville, whatever. And But even if I don't go, like if I make my regular trips up to New Jersey, then they, on their own, begin. Look, uh, you know uh, Trouble, Austin. Look, Austin was coming by to see me every week. That's kind of the tattoo thing. I said, Austin, maybe we're going to get a little tattoo. I said, I was thinking of it for the... He was even one day wanted to do a meeting. He said, John, come, I want to do my own meeting. I said, I, well, I can't make it today, Austin. But he had it in him because he had a background with God. He used to be in like a Christian home and his brothers got, you know, he's been in trouble over the years. 
But I said, no. I said, if you get on the right track, you guys can do the same thing. And I tell off. I said, look, I came to Texas. I was 18, joined the Navy. I was, like, in problems in the beginning. Got kicked out of the Navy, then wound up staying. I, I say that not so much to brag, though I also do like to brag. But I say that, <laughs> I say that because you can do it. I tell some of the younger guys and even the older guys, I said, yes, you can do it. I said, it can be done. I said, you don't need... You know, maybe a big church to back you up or anything. You can do it. So, uh, but this week, hopefully, we'll, uh, I'll, if we go to Kingsville tomorrow, I go to Alice on Thursday, but really I've been spending the day out there because that's my daughter. But the Kingsville or the Bishop one, I, I'll probably try to take some guys. And, I want to go to San Antonio. Well, the San Antonio one was with Whistler's brother, which was Larry. Now, they're still friends on Facebook. And I have not done that one, you know, because that was only a once a month. But Larry, if you're watching a Whistler, uh, uh, text me again your address. In, it, you might have moved from the other apartment. And we'll come up and we'll, I'll take some of the guys and we'll do it. We did a bunch of meetings that I never put on video. And I don't know if I had any of those meetings on video, but from now on we're going to do it because that'll, I'll videotape them because that'll be part of the teaching. So today you could say the theme would have been I'm trying to encourage, because I get mad on a lot of videos. I made one, I curse and stuff. I, I get bad on some of them. But each day, I want to, each time, I want to have themes. So today, the theme would be, if you pay, if everyone followed everything, he talked a little bit about how John Osteen said, God is not an angel. That comes from some Christians' belief that the reference to St. Michael the Archangel in Revelation, uh, some say that was Jesus. There's reasons, because they say it fits the other imagery of a rider on a horse and all. But regardless, the theme today was God manifests himself. And sometimes he uses angels to do that. And he ripped the verse from the Mass this past week was the angels appeared to Abraham. And the purpose of that was for his destiny to be fulfilled. Because God made a promise to Abraham early on in his life that you're going to have a child. Through that child, you're going to have many, many, many nations which was fulfilled through the people of Israel and that through one of those children one day the whole earth would be blessed. That's a big theme of the Apostle Paul, that through one of Abraham's seed or children the whole earth would be blessed. That was fulfilled through Jesus who was born the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, the offspring of Jesse. So God's gonna, the theme is you might wait, Abraham waited a long time before that was fulfilled in his life. Moses waited a long time before his destiny was fulfilled. So that's the theme. You might be older. I just turned 54 the other day. Uh, did a little video. I'm 54. And, uh, but you, it's never really too late uh, to fulfill the purpose that God has. The key is you, you still be led of God. All you have is the day you're in. You know, I had friends here for many years, Bill and Jit, football Jim. They're all dead. They're all dead. All you have is the day you have. You see? It'll be a day you'll wake up and you'll be in God's kingdom. You'll be in heaven. You say, wow, I must have died last night. I, sometimes that, I think that's probably what it'll be like. And so then you'll say, oh, now I'm in the eternal day. And why did I waste all those other one days worrying about stuff? I should have just heard God every day and then he can fulfill what he wants, okay? Who wants to pray at the end? I want one of you guys to pray. Anybody who wants to pray? Lord Jesus Christ, I met that man on the bus. He had concerns about his sister, Elizabeth. He's been diagnosed with lupus. I got a chance to pray with him. And I'm still mentioning her in my prayers in the morning. I pray you bless her this day and her brother because that big, mean-looking man let me take him by the hand and pray. And I pray for my brother, John Crow. Crow, Donna, my friend Donna here, this ministry and all the ministers that help us because they're getting a hard time too right now. Anyway, Lord, I just ask, you know, you bless us, take us to just stay safely. Thank you. Jesus Amen. Christ, and we pray for uh, Brother Ray, Church Without Walls as well, that God would uh, work in all the ministries. Amen. All right, guys.